Marvel Spider-Man 2 was one of, if not my overall favorite game of 2023. Fast forward to today after a second playthrough and the introduction of New Game Plus, and we have Marvel Spider-Man 2 after the hype. Going into my initial review, I was definitely excited to jump into the sequel while trying to keep my expectations in check, and ultimately I walked away very happy with my experience giving the game a 9. Somewhat boringly, I stand by that score today, but for a few different reasons. Gameplay wise, Marvel Spider-Man 2 is an improvement in just about every sense. Swinging around feels more dynamic than ever, mixing in new animations with the existing ones, while the additional assist settings really contribute to a more organic experience. Unlike in either of the prior Insomniac Spider-Man titles, I actually feel an exciting sense of vulnerability when swinging through a dense cluster of buildings. Of course nothing is perfect, but considering that most open world games today still rely on walking around on foot or horseback, I can't help but feel we've taken for granted the amazing traversal mechanics of this series. Another aspect of these games often overlooked is combat. Of course, Marvel Spider-Man isn't the first series to implement this style of free flow combat. With some important tweaks, Marvel Spider-Man 2's combat mechanics have really found a great sweet spot of being approachable and engaging. The addition of parries may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I highly enjoyed the new layer of complexity to enemy management. The open world is a bit more of a mixed bag. When comparing this sequel to the original, I definitely was happy to see the better balance of open world activities. However, nothing on its own is all that impressive. The open world isn't designed to be explored the same way as a Breath of the Wild or Rockstar title, and that's okay. This flavor of open world is more about crossing things off a list, which I find to be less exciting yet still rewarding in its own way. With so many different yet repetitive activities, most players will have at least a few they could care less for. Side missions are a step up for the series, but still average out to being somewhat mid. I really enjoyed many of the friendly neighborhood missions because they serve as a nice break to the main gameplay loop while actually showing the Spider-Men helping out their community. With that said, most of the Brooklyn Visions and Cultural Museum missions felt like kind of a waste of Spider-Man and the player's time. Spider-Man has always been a bit of a goody-two-shoe character, and that's no different to this series. Both Peter and Miles feel a little too perfect at times, which doesn't always allow for some of their conflicts to be as impactful as it could have been. On one hand, I feel the theme of finding balance is a strong and relatable one that has several layers to it, but also feel Peter has always done his best at making do with the cards he's been dealt. He's almost saint-like in his dedication towards the greater good. As I mentioned in my review, I feel Peter's symbiote-fueled dialogue is pretty brutal and effective, but as far as actions, I think there was more room for him to falter. Like, Peter in the black suit really isn't that far away from me on a Monday morning. I like Bully Urenthal's performance, as well as how Peter's relationship with the suit mirrored addiction, but I just feel like there could have been a lower low point. Miles Morales is a likable character, but suffers from perfectitis even more than Peter. His main conflict with Lee has some high moments, but is less interesting due to being light on tension. Miles has a supportive loving mother, an amazingly resourceful best friend, a frictionless romantic interest, an easy school life, and a loyal uncle. Outside of never having enough time to do everything, he really doesn't have any major struggles to overcome. I was emotionally invested in the resolution of Miles' hatred towards Lee, but wish there would have been more conflict to overcome. I still feel Miles is a bit narratively overpowered compared to Peter, but it didn't bother me as much during my second playthrough due to it becoming clear to me that Peter had mentally been one foot out the door heading into this game's series of events, and so it makes a little more sense. Like a professional athlete, it's hard to give it your all if you're mentally not all there. For Miles, being Spider-Man is a form of escapism he looks forward to, while Peter seems to view it more as a chore, stopping him from living the life he wants. One thing that did stand out to me even more the second time around was the level of suspension of disbelief you have to have at times. Of course, this is a comic book superhero universe, and so grounded science and reality is already thrown out the window, 
But even by that standard, this game is pushing it. The first character you may be thinking of is Mary Jane, and you're not wrong in that her being able to solo a dozen trained mercenaries with a taser is a little hard to believe. But the issue isn't really her, it's more so how dumb the hunters are, and so she's not really doing anything logic defying herself. But the one character whose abilities I just could not accept was Wraith. You're telling me a random cop with no known training or superpowers is somehow able to go toe to toe with Spider-Man or take down an entire group of enemies. Feel free to correct me if I'm missing something here, but that just doesn't make any sense. When I think about this series as a whole, there has been several characters with abilities that stretch my imagination on what's possible, like Fisk, Otto, Finn, and even Venom, but at least they have some sort of in-game universe reasoning, except Fisk, I'm not really sure why he's 600 pounds of pure muscle, but still. Yuri might have also bothered me because I found her to be unlikable, and even more so the second time around. Which is unfortunate considering she was easily one of my favorite characters in 2018. Beyond just her abilities needing some sort of good reasoning, her motivations and attitude feel like too much of a deviation from who she was. Basically her entire character is just way too much of a stretch to find believable or even interesting. While we're talking about the unbelievable, can someone explain to me how Peter even was qualified for a mortgage in the first place? Last time I checked, you have to make at least double what your mortgage payment is. Focusing back on the Wraith missions, I think I was more forgiving of their shortcomings in my initial playthrough due to how much I enjoyed the other aspects of these missions. Of course, the reveal that the flame is basically confirmed to become Carnage is awesome. But even beyond that, I really like the psycho Charles Manson meets Jake Paul vibes. Something about the idea of a freakish cult is interesting and refreshing within a Spider-Man universe. On the flip side of Unbelievable, I really enjoyed how the in-game world itself had an extra emphasis on certain events and the story having a lasting impact on the city. I forget just how much sand was everywhere during the first act of the game, or noticing the dock still hadn't been repaired several missions later. These little details aren't essential, but they do go quite a long ways in making the narrative feel all the more immersive. I found the overarching story and themes of this game to be compelling and exciting, but I feel its biggest shortcoming is the same one as 2018 Spider-Man, and that's pacing. The performances across the board are so good it helps make up for the rushed narrative, but being so character driven, specifically with multiple character transformations, the game would have really benefited from being longer. You don't necessarily have to double the game's length, but having two protagonists, an unknown villain, and multiple downward spirals, there just wasn't enough screen time to let each of those pieces blossom. Trying to find the sweet spot between Peter and Miles can be hard, and I think they did a solid job in this title, but I do think overall it is a bit messier trying to find that balance where Peter ends up being the primary focus and Miles has to kind of be an invulnerable knight in shining armor throughout a lot of the game. And so overall I think the plot is a little messier than the first game, but I still think it's a solid story overall. New Game Plus was highly anticipated, and it's kind of what you would expect, it's New Game Plus. The more substantial changes within this update apply to the base and post game as well, like changing time of day, replayable missions, swapping out the color of the symbiote abilities with a couple of new suits added as well. The Hellfire Gala suit is fine, while I wasn't too interested in the fresh and fly outfits until I started messing around in photo mode. Changing your symbiote colors is nice, but one downside is now when you go into rage mode you don't have the cool anti-venom transformation anymore, which I don't know why that why you'd get rid of that, it was awesome. Time of day is another example where the addition of it is great, but then at the same time, why aren't there any weather settings? Unique to New Game Plus, you have golden tools which seem to be completely inconsequential and might not even be something you'd notice, but way more interesting. There are several new styles to anti-venom and the symbiote suits. Overall not a huge deal, but it is nice to be able to give the game another playthrough while carrying over your existing abilities and outfits. 
I really liked Marvel Spider-Man 2 in October when it came out, and I still really like it today after the hype. Certain shortcomings are more apparent, while certain pros are even more of a pro than I had maybe thought. I found the core gameplay loop of narrative beats, combat, and traversal to still be rock solid. With a great foundation and plenty of room for improvement, I'm excited to see what Insomniac has cooking up for the next Spider-Man in the series. As always, I appreciate you for watching, and until next time, see ya.